Yeah, I think the other thing too for me is just thinking about role definition on the team. Because I think, um, you know, you could argue both ways, right? Like the Raptors have five guys who uh, last season in the starting five all averaged 15 points. I think Scotty was like like 14.9, but let's just say 15 points, right? We're going to say 15. We're going to okay. give him the point w- one point. I'm, I'm willing to concede that. There you go. All right, so f- <laughs> five guys with 15 points. This is great. This is really reflective of like the offense's you know, balance in, in a way. But when you look at it, the assist totals are actually uh, come somewhat low. And when you actually look at sort of the way that each player sort of plays, I, I don't see a lot of role definition on the team. Now, that might be on purpose, and I'd love to hear your perspective on that in, in terms of Nick just giving these guys the green light just to sort of explore who they are as players because a lot of them are quite young. But is is that something to be argued that a little bit more role definition offensively could lead to sort of more effective uh, and more efficient outcomes. Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely true. I think it's it's look when you when you look around the league, everybody offensively kind of has a role. You know who's the guys who are going to set the screens, roll to the basket, and things like that, and yep. who's going to pop and and come off ball screens and things like. Everybody kind of has their their role delineation. That's a tough word for me to say. I apologize. Um, the but it goes back to what we said about the Raptors. They're all the same player. Mm. They're interchangeable, which is great on one respect and a problem on the other. So a lot of these guys are all isolation guys. So now you need to figure out, like, can we get OG to say, hey, we want you to be primarily screening for these guys, rolling and popping, and then you could attack the second side and go from there. Mm. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's, you got to kind of set that. I think it's really important. And I think the, the, the thing that would worry me if I was a Raptor fan is what you said in the beginning when you talked about speaking with Nick Nurse. He's talking about, I'm focused on the defense. Like, yeah, the defense is kind of set up at this point. Mm. All these guys have been in the system long enough and understand it and things like that. You need to start focusing on the offense here, and that's where you need to set those roles up. And I think that's the important thing there, and that's going to really be the question of where the Raptor season goes. Last year, they were a top-10 defense. That's great offensively they were 16th in the nba and And that's offensive rebounds and transition yeah exactly and that's and 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 this is using the cleaning the glass number so this takes out garbage time the the you need to try to get up to being closer to just 12 and 13 Mm -hmm. just take a little bit of a leap and have your defense still being that good but that's going to take coaching and that's that's concerning for me if nick nurse is saying hey i'm just more focused on the defense i don't want to draw up plays like, no, I, th- I think you need to draw up some plays. And I think he's a great coach, and I know he can do it. Mm. It's just a question of can they put something in there? Yeah, well, listen, to be to be fair, I, I think he was just sort of mar- remarking on the fact that his reputation coming into the league when he was we an assistant at first was... We yeah, you know don't what? You're, do you're right. fair, Will. You're right. He's already come <laughs> on the program. I guess, I guess we could just disregard this now. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, But I, I, I did take a quote out of context, basically. <laughs> no, nah, it's but, all good. No, no. no um, yeah. um, but I, I think... Yeah, I mean, his reputation was, like, as an offensive coach. I remember, like, even the last season where Dwayne Casey won Coach of the Year, a lot of the credit to the Raptors was like, wow, they sort of, like, you know, revolutionized the offense. They were, like, really ISO heavy. Then they sort of played more team basketball, especially that second unit for the Raptors was really strong that year, really helped them propel themselves to almost 60 wins in the regular season. And, of course, unfortunately, they didn't work in the playoffs and Dwayne got let go. But that year, a lot of the credit, offensively went to Nick who really was able to sort of like impart his, 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 uh, you know, schemes on the offensive. And of course, then he became head coach and, you know, won the championship. So there, you know, there's no complaints, but I mean, even thinking about that championship team, right? Like the role definition on that team was very clear. Kyle Lowry is your point guard. He's passed first. He's going to set guys up, look to get guys scoring. He was averaging like between eight and nine assists for most of that season. Um, you know, you have obviously Danny Green, who is like the most role-defined person I, I can even imagine in the NBA. <laughs> you know, go to the corner, all right? Uh, sometimes you cut baseline, you know, with, with that uh, with that Danny Green cut, you know, maybe switch ends of the floor. But mostly, you know, you're going to be shooting threes and obviously knowing your role. Um, Kawhi is your classic star, right? You give him the ball, operate. You can obviously set him up as well. Kick her, but you can basically do whatever you want offensively with Kawhi. But, you know, he was your star. Pascal was running out in transition. Uh, scoring in the post, a lot of uh, at that time people were guarding him one on one, and so he was able to score his most efficient season, one most improved player. And then you know you either had Serge or Marcus all in the middle, but those guys are pretty classic centers, right? Mark is even more adaptable because you can keep him on the three point line, stretch it out a little bit, and let him move the ball. But guys had role definition on the team. 
that when you think to like this version of the Raptors, I can't necessarily say which player is going to do what on a night to night basis. Um, and so I, I think maybe there is some room for role uh, definition, but I think, you know, it's, you know, to give the coaching staff a little bit of credit, like it is, it's hard when, when guys are very ambitious, it, it, it's hard, you know, like Fred's coming up on a new deal. I think probably for his perspective, he's already made the all-star team. So he's probably less worried about it, but Pascal's trying to become a top five player. That's his sort of stated goal. Scotty's trying to build off the momentum of his rookie year to become an all-star. Gary is coming up on a new deal. OG's already talked about, you know, uh, you know, the reports were already out there that, you know, he wanted to expand his role a little bit. It's sort of like who on the team is going to accept their specific roles that they do best and sort of allow sort of the distribution of shots to sort of be as optimized as possible. That, that it, That's it, a real coaching challenge. It's, it's an extremely tough challenge. It's actually, this is probably going to be my more controversial take. And this is probably where people will get mad and, and demand I never be allowed on the radio again. Right, that's up to me and Alex. So, it, it, okay. Well, I, I, I hopefully, oh, so I just need to win you two over, yeah. but that's, that's why it wouldn't shock me if they, if they find a new home for OG on Anobi. Okay. Like it's, it's not a, it's, and it's not about whether he's good or whatnot or things like that. It's just, you need to have some other piece on your team. That's not six, eight and not the same as everybody else. You know, it's, um, I don't know what, uh, I don't, I don't think they're actively looking to trade him or anything like that. This is just my thought of Mm -hmm. like, if I'm building this team, I know I can get a ton for him and maybe I can put together more of that team that won the championship, you know, more of that model somewhere in place. Cause it feels like the model they have now is good. And I think this team's a top six team in the East. I think they're going to make the playoffs, not a play in team. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that last year and I, they, they vindicated me by making it. I think it's going to be the same thing again this year. I think they're slept on, but I think when it gets to the playoffs, that's where that just redundancy becomes a problem. And now that you have Scotty Barnes there, I almost feel like you have too much. And maybe it's time to explore a little bit of what can OG bring back for you? And can he kind of bring the roster, you know, into that position where we do have roles set up and it's closer to a thing where we can have a more competent and more consistent half court offense. Mm. 